Hello and welcome to Megawatts. Where each week we give you the lowdown on the latest piece of kit from the world of technology and gadgets. I'm Katie Scott. And I'm Stuart Miles. And we are here in Berlin to give you a very special show of From EFA. That's right, anybody who's anybody is launching TVs, washing machines, you name it, it's going to be here. So make sure you stay tuned for the highlights of this year's show. Causing quite a stir on the Philips stand is this ultra-thin LCD TV concept and at just 8 millimeters thin, if this actually comes to market, it will be the world's thinnest LCD TV because the current thinnest model is 9 millimeters. Obviously there's the Sony OLED technology but as you've seen the screens are actually very very small whereas this one behind me is a 32 inch model. We don't have any idea of pricing. They are hopeful that this will come to market and they've also said that the design is quite flexible so behind us you have a design where technology is in the base but we've just seen the Philips Essence and the guy that we spoke to said that there is absolutely no reason why this TV screen, this television, couldn't adopt that sort of technology. So all of the technology in the base projecting up to an ultra thin TV screen. If we hear any more details from Philips as to whether or not this is actually going into production, we'll let you know. Behind me is the new 42 inch Essence from Philips. The big deal with this TV is that you're getting the same sort of picture quality 1080p as you had for the Aurea, but this machine is a lot thinner. In fact, it's 380 millimeters. But the other key feature is the wireless aspect. It's not wireless, but it's just one cord from the box down here, which is basically the power source for the television up to the television itself. So the sound and the juice comes from this box and it's just one wire up to the television. But Philips also said to us that you could use this as essentially a hub for your home cinema system. So you could connect up your Blu-ray player to the hub and then the content will be streamed through the wire up to your Philips television, up to the new Essence television. And you could also connect it up to your speakers. So if you want a full home cinema system, you could use the box to do this. Price-wise, you're looking at 3,900 euros, which is about three and a half grand, and it's arriving in September. If you're thinking of buying a new television, maybe you should hold off just a little bit longer. Well, that's what Samsung are hoping you'll do with the new televisions announced at the show due out in the beginning of next year. Called the Ultra Slim Range, they're 29 millimeters thick for the 46 inch model. They'll also be in 50 inch model as well. Why are we excited? Well, unlike the Sony, the Sharp, the Philips, the LG and a couple of other devices on show at the show this week, all the gubbins are actually in the box, so it's just one unit and it's still this thin. Pretty impressive, due out next year, no word on pricing though. Not wanting Sony to have all the fun at IFA in Berlin, Samsung have launched their own OLED televisions and here they are, 31 inches and a 14 inch model make the 27 and 9 inch models from Sony look comparatively small in respect. They're very thin, they're very big, they're very shiny and pretty crystal clear. In fact, this is probably the way that television is going to go in the future. The catch, well, they probably won't be available until 2010. We sat down with a big cheese of Samsung in the UK and he said, well, while the technology is ready to rock and roll, it's the price that's the limiting factor at the moment. If you want to go as thin as the MacBook Air but don't want to use the Mac operating system, then Samsung are hoping that the X360, which they've launched at IFA this year, will be just for you. It comes with a 100 gig solid state drive, Intel 2 do core processor, and a 13 and a half inch screen, big keyboard, very Mac focused. It's 1.27 kilos, so slightly lighter than the MacBook Air is 1.36, and there's a number of features still on it, so you still get an Ethernet port, there's three USB sockets, uh, HDMI, VJ out, and all the other gubbins, including Wi-Fi, Bluetooth, what have you. 10 hours of battery life, it's gonna cost around 1,200 pounds when it comes out later in the year in the UK. No 
this isn't the Asus E behind me. In fact, this is LG's first foray into the netbook market. This is the X110, which is a 10 inch new laptop coming soon, in fact, coming in September. For between 399 and 499 euros, you have several different options. You start off with the basic machine, which has one gigabyte of RAM and 120 gigabyte of memory. And it comes with a three cell battery, which lasts for about 3.5 hours. But if you want to upgrade, you can go for a six cell battery. So obviously twice the battery time and also higher memory options. So two gigabytes of RAM. Also worth mentioning is the fact that this machine has close to a full size QWERTY key so it's all right for big hands. It also is built around an Intel Atom processor, so you're getting good processing speeds and it's arriving late September and the prices range between 399 and 499 euros. Continuing the Thin is in motto at IFA, Sharp have also launched a new Thin television, 23 millimeters thick. As you can see around the back, it's pretty thin. Now, realizing that thin televisions might not have plenty of space for speakers, there's an optional speaker which you're going to add on the bottom. Now, Sharp have turned to Pioneer very cleverly to say, hey, can you provide us with some decent sound because we're not sure we can do that. The downside, well, there is a box that's connected via a wire which is hidden out of our way here that has all the electronic gubbins in it to make it work. Other than that, standard spec supply, so it's 1080p, 24 frames a second. It's got 100 megahertz and pretty much all the usual bells and whistles. Expected to come in October in the UK, it's going to cost you around 10,000 euros. The T500 is the latest 10.1 megapixel snapper from Sony. OK, that's not that big a resolution because the Cybershot range actually goes up to 13.6 megapixels. But this camera is feature rich, but in a very different way. If we actually get it in our hands, you can see, flicking it on, first of all, at the front, you've got the five times Carl Zeiss optical zoom lens, but it's actually at the back that you have the interesting features because you have a 3.5 inch touch screen, which is the same screen that we saw in the T500 and the T77, but it's the HD capabilities of this camera which sets it apart. It's capable of 720p, HD video recording. So basically, you can snap your videos, go home, connect up your camera to your shiny new Sony Bravia TV, and then enjoy all of your video content. Sony's OLED technology caused all sorts of excitement when it was launched way back in January. Well, this new model, the ZX1, might not be as thin at 9.9 millimeters, but look at the size of it. In fact, it'll be a whole series of TVs arriving on our shelves in January. The model behind me is actually a 40 inch model. Instead of organic light emitting diodes, what you've got is LEDs at the side of the screen. As well as this, you get 100 hertz in terms of image turnover. So again, very good quality and HD. And you also have an HD box, which means that you can keep the wires hidden. So your HD content streams to the TV screen. As I said, arriving in January, but we don't have prices as yet for the UK. When we do, we'll make sure we get them to you. The ZX1 models may be skinny, but they deliver HD content at 100 hertz. Whereas this new series, the Z4500, delivers HD content at 200 hertz, which is twice that of normal LCD televisions. Sony is, of course, claiming a world first with this, which isn't technically true because Samsung actually announced a concept model which delivered content at 240 hertz. But where Sony wins, these models, the 40, 46 and 52 inch models will be on the shelves by Christmas, whereas Samsung's model won't be available until 2011. All of the prices and the tech specs are on Pocket Lint right now. Well, there you have it, all the latest gadgets and gizmos that are going to be coming to a living room near you soon. Well, that's it for this week. Hope you've enjoyed the show. Why don't you tune in next time for more news, reviews, tips, tricks, opinions and much more. I'm Stuart Miles. Katie's already got the flight. We'll see you next week.